Hi! Now that we've figured out how to place our allele values on our canvas, let's find out how to get these values from the user. As you can see, in our final program, we want the user to enter the allele values that are printed onto the screen. Let's see how to do this. We can use the command input to ask the user to enter information that we can use in our program. To write this, we type the word input and then inside parentheses, inside quotation marks, we type the text prompt we want our user to see. In this case, we're going to ask the user for the alleles of the first parent. You'll notice that we are giving them an example of how to write this information because we want them to type their answer in a certain way. We have also included an extra space after our last colon. This is so that when the user sees the prompt, there is a space between where the question ends and their answer begins. Now we can see that the user has typed capital G, lowercase g. In order to use this information, we need to save it somewhere. We're going to use a variable in order to do this. A variable is just a way we can store information to use later in our code. We're going to save the information the user types in a variable called allele1. We don't want to use any spaces in our variable names, which is why we're writing this all as one word. Now that we've saved what the user typed as a variable, we can use this as the text to print to the screen by simply plugging the variable name into the write text command where we would normally write the text to print. An important note is that we do not use quotation marks around the variable name, or you'll simply be printing the name of the variable instead of the information that is stored inside it. Okay, so we have found out how to print out the info a user provides to the canvas, but we want to split the two letters a user types so that one is at position 1 and the other is at position 2. To do this, we're going to need to take a look at the index values of strings. A string is just a piece of text. For this example, we're going to set a variable named string equal to the word hello. The index values of our string are assigned to each letter, starting at 0. In this case, the letter H is at index 0, the letter E is at index 1, and so on until we reach the last letter O, which is at index 4. The important thing to note here is that our index values do not start at 1. They always start at 0. Now, if we wanted to get a specific letter of our string, we write the variable name and use square brackets to denote which index value we want. So if I write string 0, the letter I would be finding is H. If I write string 3, the letter I would find is the second L. If I use the commands written here, all of the letters stored inside my variable allele1 will print at location 1 but I can index these values to print one at a time in different locations. In this case, the capital G is stored at index value 0, and the lowercase g is stored at index value 1. So if I want to only print the capital G at location 1, I can alter my write text command to only print the letter found at index 0, which is the capital G. Let's go to the editor to print the second letter to position 2. After Tracy gets to position negative 50, 110, I want to ask the user for the allele pair, so I can write their letters on top of the boxes in my Punnett square. I'll use the variable name allele1, and then use the term input to get input from the user. I'll write my prompt inside quotes. What is the first parent's alleles? Let's also give an example so they know how I want it to be written. And I'm going to make sure I put a space before I close my quotation marks and my parentheses. Now that I've saved this information, I'll use it to print the allele values to the screen. If I simply write allele 1 in place of my number 1 here, and I run it, I'll see that both alleles are printed in my number 1 position. Let's use indexing to split the values up. So instead of just allele 1, I'll put a 0 so I can get the indexed value of that string. Awesome! In place of number 2, I want to call allele 1 and get the value found at the first index. Let's see how that looks. Perfect! Now it's your turn. 